Shamai, let's learn bass ukulele. Okay, so I've had a few requests to do some basic lessons on bass ukuleles. Now I'm going to use this one, my um, solid body neck rest, but I'm also going to use my electroacoustic because that's probably the most popular type of bass ukulele. Okay, so <clears throat> the bass uke is exactly the same to play as a bass guitar and double bass. However, if you've bought a bass ukulele because you want to go along and play in your local ukulele group, it's a little bit different, okay? Most bass guitarists learn to read tab, which are the lines and the numbers. Most double bassists or classical double bassists learn to read notation, the actual dots of music. Um, most uke groups learn to play using chord charts or lyrics with the chords written in. Now, what I'm gonna try and teach you guys is where the notes are on your bass ukuleles so you can join in with your uke groups playing along with the chord charts. If you wanna go and learn to read tab, loads of resources out there, all right, go and check out for bass guitar. Um, but I'm gonna try and keep it really simple, show you where the notes are so you can join in as quickly as possible with other uke players. Right, so before we can actually learn how to play our bass ukes, we've got to learn how to tune them. Um, I have done a more in-depth video on tuning ukuleles, where I talk a lot about clip-on tuners. Um, most bass electroacoustics have an inbuilt tuner. So we'll look at those first of all. You need to switch the button on, so the lights appear. Okay, now... I'm going to try and hold it steady. I can't tune and hold this, but there's our G. All right, you see the green light come on. It tells you which string you're plucking. Then my D, then my A string, and then my E string. Okay, so if you've got an inbuilt tuner, they are great. One thing though, you have to remember really important you've got to switch it off it sort of acts like a mute button so if you leave your bass uke tuner switched on and plug into the amp nothing is going to come through all right so that's the inbuilt ones now not all basses have got an inbuilt tuner and the solid body certainly haven't so you've got a couple of options with these you can use a clip-on tuner like i've got on this one here so Pluck the string, we're looking for it to be green. There we are, there's the G string. If you're not sure, run your finger up the string so you know which peg to turn. Then, so I'm gonna do the D string next. Yeah, my D is in tune. My A string. And again, like the inbuilt tuners, it's telling me which string it's on. So my E, there we go. I'm only turning it a fraction. So that's the clip-on tuner. And then we've got one of these, which is a, a plug-in tuner. One end of my uh, cable goes into the tuner. The other end is going into my bass uke. It's all switched on. So if I try and hold that nice and steady for you. All right, so it works in exactly the same fashion. I pluck the string, it tells me which note I'm playing and whether I'm in tune. Okay, so there's your plug-in tuner. There are a couple of other ways you can tune your bass ukuleles. There are some phone apps, they're not great at picking up the bass frequencies, or you could just tune it by ear using a piano or pitch pipes, but that's really difficult if you're a beginner. So if you can um, use an inbuilt tuner, if you've got one on your uke, or a clip-on tuner or a plug-in tuner, but whatever you do, tune your bass ukuleles. Using a strap on your bass ukulele, it's probably a bit more important than on your normal ukes. Um, apart from them being a bit heavier, um, the way you play it, if you play your normal uke, you tend to have your arm round so you can strum like that. With your bass ukes, your arm tends to go over the top because you're plucking the strings. Okay, so a strap 
really is quite important. Um, I use a one and a half inch strap on this base because it is a little bit heavier. Um, let me grab my other base ukulele. I use a normal, or what I'd deem a normal base, uh, sorry, a normal ukulele strap on this, it's one inch wide. Um, this is a bit lighter. So again, it's the same sort of technique. Yes, you could have it on your lap, but it's so much safer, hands-free. Um, and there we go. My arm goes over the top. I'm not holding it like that, you see. I'm going over the top. So this is where you do need a strap. Um, one little thing, strap buttons. When I had this base yoke, it only had the bottom strap button. You can put a normal strap and tie it around the top there, or you could, which is what I did, add another strap button to your ukulele. Um, if you want more information on either of those, I've done a video on adding strap buttons, and I've done a video talking about ukulele straps and how you could tie them on as well. But for your base ukes, a strap, really important. So your base uke is in tune, you've got a strap on it. Um, before we plug it in and really start to learn where the notes are, let's just see how we hold it. Um, it's going to be up to you where you find your comfy zone. For me, personally, I like to hold my bass quite high. So even if I'm sitting down, there's a gap between the bottom of the bass and my leg. And I tend to leave my right arm or my plucking hand fall over the top. So I'll come in a bit closer. All right, so there's my right arm over there. And I like to just rest my thumb on the waist of the bass for there. And then I can, even on the G string, the furthest one, I can reach my fingers across. Okay, so that's my comfort place of playing. You'll see some bass players resting their thumb there. Now, I don't like doing that, if I'm honest. And there isn't really anything else to rest your thumbs on, okay? I think you can actually buy a little attachment you can stick on your base. I'll have to look into that. But for me, okay, my right arm goes over. I rest my thumb. Now, bear in mind, that's the pickup, okay? Now, on a normal uke, you'd be strumming it up here somewhere, all right? Now, f for my base, for this one, I find the sweet spot of plucking is there. That's where it sounds the nicest. And it just so happens I can rest my thumb there as well. Okay, so holding your solid body uke. Uh, same principle, I tend to have a gap there. I don't like having my bass on my lap when I'm playing. Um, but it's exactly the same in terms of my arm goes over the top like it does on my electroacoustic. I've got something to rest here. If you think a traditional bass guitar would have its pickups in the middle and most bass players tend to rest their thumb on the pickup. For this one, I can rest it on my scratch plate and then pluck my strings. Okay, like everything else, you're going to have to find your comfort zone. Most bass ukes are slightly different different shape, different size. So you've got to find what works for you, okay? For me, um, electroacoustic, my thumb rests on the top of the body. Solid body, my thumb rests on the scratch plate. So our bass ukuleles are tuned with a strap and we know to hold it. The last thing we need to do now is to plug it into an amp. Now, technically, yeah, you can play your bass ukes without plugging them into an amplifier, but electroacoustic and electric, the whole point is plugging them in, okay? Now, you must use a bass amplifier for this. Please, if you're not sure about this, go and check out my bass ukulele basics, because I explain a little bit more in that, and I will be very shortly doing a video on bass amps for bass ukuleles, all right? so. Standard guitar cable, just with a jack, all right? This one has got a right angle and a straight. Doesn't really matter if you've got one with two straight ends on it. I'm gonna plug one end into my bass ukulele and the other end 
is going to go into my amplifier. Now, even though you can see a light on down there at the minute, the amp is muted in effect, it's switched off. Really important, you mustn't go plugging any instruments into amps when they're switched on, you can get horrible nasty pops and bangs. So, into the input, if I play it, it's still acoustic at the moment because the amp technically is switched off. Let's switch it on and here's the difference. Okay, so suddenly now we've got electric, we're ready to learn. So as I explained at the beginning of the video, my aim is to try and teach you guys where the notes are, all right? So you can then play along with your chord charts and your group, or you could be jamming with a guitarist and they say, oh, yeah, I'm playing an E chord and I'm playing a C chord. Well, you need to know where the C and the E are on your bass ukes, okay? So, first of all, what is my right hand doing? Then I'll talk about the open strings. So, where do I rest my hand? I mentioned this when we were doing a holding. I tend to put my thumb there in the waist of the bass uke, all right? And then I quite like the sound from my uke just below the sound hole, okay? So this is the way I play it. I'm going to use my two first fingers. You will see some bass players using their thumb, okay? Now, the only problem with that is you've only got one thumb. If you've got you can use two fingers, you can play much faster. So with my thumb resting up there, I'm just gonna use my first and second finger and walk them across the strings, okay? I'll come in a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. So, okay, there we go in. Okay, so each finger plucks a string twice, all right? Now, I'm not pulling, this is really important, I'm not pulling my fingers away from the bass, I'm pulling them across the front of the bass. So if I'm on the thickest string, my finger goes up towards where my thumb is sitting, okay? I'm doing it really lightly. If I go to the next string, my fingers go across and actually stop on that bottom string. Okay, I'm not plucking very hard. Then I go across to the next string and then they stop and then onto the thinnest string. Okay, so really important, my fingers are coming across, not away from the uke. Right, so I've just come into the slightly different angle so you can see what my fingers are doing. I'm pulling across the strings. Okay, they're not pulling away like that. If you do that too hard, you get that horrible slapping sound, okay? But I'm pulling them across. walking them. Each finger plays the string twice. Right, so I'm just going to go over it one more time with the electric solid body now, so you can see where my um, thumb sits for this one. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing if you want to join in. My first two fingers, one and two, are going to pluck each string, starting from the thickest, going to the thinnest, and we we'll pluck each one twice. Okay, so here we go. Okay, now something just to consider, but it's not, you don't have to do this at the moment. You might notice that when I'm plucking these open strings, they keep on ringing. All right, especially if I go back the other way. Hear the first one and the sort of sound starts to build up. Now, what you can do when you're practicing, give your left hand something to do, right? Nice and gently, if you hover your left hand above the string, and then when you finish plucking it, stop the string ringing before you go on to the next string. But you've got to remember to lift it back up again, otherwise 
it doesn't work okay get that sort of sound so i'm going to do that one more time and this time i'm going to stop the strings ringing but if you can't manage that don't worry all right so i'm going from the thinnest string back down to the thickest string to uh plex here we go Okay, so that's just doing a nice, easy plucking going across the open strings. Right, so before we start learning all the names of the notes, let's just practice that for a minute. So, using our two fingers, we're going to start with the thickest string, and we're going to go two, then two, then two, then four on our thinnest string, and then come back down again. Okay, let's see if we can do this with me. All right. If you can, mute or stop the strings ringing in between. Great. If you can't, don't worry. All right, I'll count us in. Three, four. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Three, four. One, two. One, two. One, two. Okay. I'll come in a bit closer. All right, this is your practice time now. So starting with the thickest string, exactly the same. Three, four. Another two. Then back. So how did you get on plucking the strings? Right, so that's the four strings. What are they called? Um, notes in music, little mini alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then back to A, all right? So there's only actually seven different notes and we're learning four different ones here. Now, I actually teach this two different ways. Um, for almost 30 years teaching double bass, I've always taught from the thinnest string across. It just seems to make more sense when you're playing double bass. So I've always taught the children, um, Great Danes are enormous. G, D, A, E. Great Danes are enormous. Not Danish people, the big dogs, the size of horses. Okay, however, for some reason, ukulele players tend to learn the strings going the other way, G, C, E, A. And so I've sort of switched it around a bit if I'm trying to teach uke players, and it goes evil ants dig graves. Evil, E, ants, A, D, dig graves, G, okay? so. Evil ants dig graves, or Great Danes are enormous. Whichever way works for you, but it's G, D, A, E, E, A, D, G. Right, so ukuleles and guitars get chord charts. What you'll notice with my diagram is it's our fretboard, all right? Um, we just go like this so you can see it a bit easier. You'll notice, okay, that the top bit of the diagram is this, the nut, all right, which is where the strings um, rest on to get onto the fretboard. And then if I come in a bit closer again, you will notice, all right, yeah, that's probably about the right distance. That is our first fret, okay? That is our second fret. There's our third fret, and you'll notice the dot, same as on the diagram. Our fourth fret, and then our fifth fret with the other dot. So where you see that, that is going to be the same as our diagram. And if you look, the names of the strings, G, D, A, and E, exactly the same as on the fret diagram. 
Okay, and just to show you this fret diagram of fret is exactly the same. Now this is actually a fretless. I'll talk a bit more about that next lesson, okay? Because we're only doing the open strings today. So let's now try, we know the names of the strings. This time, let's try plucking them and saying the, the, the actual notes as well. I know it seems crazy, but it does work, I promise you. So we're gonna do exactly like we just did a minute ago. We're gonna start on our E string because we know the name of the thickest string now. And we will do two on E, two on A, two on D, and then four on G, and then back D, A, and E. Just like we did a minute ago, but say the name of the notes out loud, okay? Here we go, so three, four, E, E, a, A, D, D, G, G, the other two, G, G, D, D, A, A, E, E. Okay, hopefully you're all sat at home going, evil ants, dig, graves, okay? But it does work, I promise you, all right? so. E, E, A, A, D, D, G, G. What I do with the students in school, little test to see if they know the names of their strings or not, because this is the basics, all right? If you can get these first four notes, it's a really good starting platform. So this is the sort of thing I would do in school. G, got it? It's your thinnest string. A. Got it? Remember, evil ant dig graves. So there's your A. D. Got it? Okay. Evil ant dig graves. E. Got it? Is your thickest string? E. Got it? That's the one where the kids go, but miss, you've done that one. All right, yeah. mix it up. D, got it. Okay, so it's just a little game to play with yourself to be able to really learn the names of the strings, get somebody else to test you, all right? Ideally, you wanna be able to play those quickly. So if somebody says G, A, G, E, D. Okay, see if you can get those learned. And of course, if you're practicing as well, you know, I've just shown you how to do two on each. You can do four, you can do eight, you can do one. All right, it's all about practicing your plucking with your two fingers and getting to know the names of these strings. E, E, A, A, D, D, G, G. Doesn't matter if people think you're mad, say it out loud. idea to jump around when you're doing it as well so something like e e g a d e a g okay or doing four on each one to be able to go G, D, G, D, E, A, E, D, G, A, D, E. Okay? Right, let's just slow it back down again for a second. Um, that's pretty much what we're going to do in this lesson. When you actually think about it, all right, tune in, sussed, okay, you can take your time learning that. Um, we've got the strap, and holding it. So the two things you need to be thinking about is your plucking, okay, and just using these open strings and getting to know the names of them, all right? If you can get that pretty much nailed, 
we're halfway there okay so just slow it down for a second think about practicing your plucking and your open strings great danes are enormous or evil ants dig graves or any other one you can think of right so let's finish the lesson off with a couple of little um play alongs so i've done some chords and a little drum beat keeping it really simple just two strings at a time we're going to start with the thickest two strings e and a four e's followed by four a's followed by four e's and so on if you can try and keep walking your two fingers and again only if you can try and stop the strings ringing out but if you can't do that don't worry okay so you get yourselves ready a and e string here we go e to start two three on to a Okay, how do we get on with that? Same thing, but this time with the A and the D string. Okay, so four A's followed by four D's. Here we go. Ready? A. on with that one so the thinnest two strings d and g and we're going to start on a d okay four again get yourselves ready here we go d to start on to g back to d on to g strings sorted right so tuning your bass ukes straps holding it plugging it into an amp um plucking with your first two fingers and your first four notes your open strings i know it seems like a lot to take in practice will make perfect lesson two which is coming very soon I'm going to go over putting uh, your fingers down to start playing your first notes. You can play along with songs. As always, I really do hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, give us a like, leave a comment or a question below if you've got one. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. And thank you for watching.